welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and as you can see we are not in the garage, we're in London, I'm just going past Madame Tussauds over there and I'm heading to the London Concourse which starts tomorrow and I've got three cars entered this year in this event. It's, it's one of my favourite Concours events because made it, well, it's the location, it's very tight, uh, small sort of infield and it's held at the Honourable Artillery Company and that is in the City of London. Well, I mean in the City of London. It's actually just up the road from the Bank of England. Quite a mad place, but it's a cricket ground. The three cars I've got entered are the Zagato I'm in now, the Countach, which was a late entry because they wanted the Countach in their Lamborghini display, and the Jaguar XJ Coupe the V12 manual that I did, which was a let's make green great again class, so that seemed perfect for that. The Zagato was in the wild card class, and the, the uh, Kuntash and the Jaguar were collected this morning on a transporter, so I've got to rush down to help them unload and that sort of thing. And I ended up, I bring, I thought which car should I take into London? Kuntas, I've literally just picked up and I thought, yeah, getting that, London is no fun to drive in anymore. And I didn't really find, you know, taking a Kuntas down straight from rebuild, I don't really know it, if there's any, got anything, cobbles or any, don't know, so I didn't take that. Jaguar's got quite a heavy clutch and I thought, oh, I'm going to be bound to be sitting in traffic. Uh, so I didn't want to take that. So, Zagato it is, and it's proved bang on ever since it arrived slightly iffy uh, petrol gauge but I can live with that, filled it up. So that's why we're in this. So I'm heading to the showground now for where the other cars are. It's Monday, the event is tomorrow and uh, you'll join us at the event. I'll set them up tonight and then tomorrow we'll go around and see how the judging goes. Speed camera, Waze is keeping me safe. Keep right, that's all right, Euston bypass and there's no traffic but there's a 20 mile an hour limit. And it's very hard, I find, to do 20 miles an hour. Oh, especially there's no cars around you. Anyway, see you in a bit. morning today is show day and judging day after all the prep of yesterday getting the cars down here getting them into position they all look good it was a beautiful day yesterday super sunshine I'm hoping the sun's going to come out today as well it's a bit cloudy but it's it's half past 10 it's early days it opens to the public at 11 o'clock and the first car being judged of my three is the Jaguar Coupe at 11 30 so what I'm going to do now I'll take you around each car and I'll just show you how I prep them ready to be judged. Got to tie them up a bit, put the windows down, that sort of thing. Let's go over to the Jaguar Coupe. Right, first thing I see on the Jaguar is how it's been parked here. Someone must have tried to put the wipers on because that is not in its park position. So I'm going to change that. And the other thing I'm going to do is drop the windows because it looks much better with the windows down. And there's a few things if you come around here in the back. Yeah, I've brought down yeah, history files for all three cars. That's my catalogue. And they're little bits of metal for the Zagato. I'll run through what they are in a moment, but yeah. First of all, we need to sort those, sort those wipers and windows out. I think that's in the park position there. Yeah, that's, that's better. Now, windows. And I love the way this rear window goes down. It's like no other window I know. It does that and then goes, whoa, just how it fits in the door. We'll go and do the other side now. I thought that went all the way down. Oh, it just needs a little helping hand. Oh, old Jaguars for you. Well, here's the Fulvia. This is the wild cards class. There's all sorts of cars in here, including the Monteverdi 375. Uh, target topped. Testarossa over there which I've never seen but these are the bits of metal that I've brought down and the history file. Now 
very kindly the bodgers who did the body on this years ago when they replaced one of the door skins they didn't bother taking the old door skin off so that is the top of a door i think it's there so when they t we took that door skin off that was underneath and that meant we could match the color so i'm gonna quietly put that under there to show the judges and i've just got to work out where this panel was i have a suspicion it's there as well yeah there it is right so that that was just too much for sam and adrian when they took all the filler off and they found all these welds on it they said enough we can't fix that and they literally just hacked it out and started again and that's a brand new bit of metal so i'm gonna bung that under there as well to bring out at time of judging history file so i'll put that in the car and then quick look at the engine check it's still there i think we're all good there it is i've actually taken the socks off the carburettors just so it's exposed trumpet because this is work spec as it were i ought to wipe that engine off actually i just see a little bit of stuff on there yeah i'm going to get a cloth just clean that up down there before judging starts exciting i love the bright yellow cam cover on this engine it it represents this is the 1600 engine and that's they got yellow cam covers so i'm just gonna make sure that looks extra shiny yellow good that's about it really It's all very silly, but uh, it's all part of it. Right, let's go have a look at the Kuntas. Well, here's the Kuntas, and beside it was meant to be the new Kuntas LP804, and it's not here. I'm going to find out what happened, but I was really looking forward to seeing the two Kuntases together, but uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. Nothing to do to this one, really. I'll, op I'll open it up, but... Uh, I could clean the carpets, I suppose. I could put the seat belt away. That's about it. It's quite nice that it is so just out of restoration. This one is just on the button now. Well, there you go. That's the judging over. Not quite sure about this one. How you're sort of judging a sea of green cars. If it's make green great again, you almost want the green to enhance the car. You want a bit of sun for it to really make it pop. But I think it looks pretty good amongst this field. Who knows? All down to the judges. Right, Lancia next. There you go, how long did that? Yeah, I'm late. Um, yeah, five past twelve, so I nattered on. It's one of my fun things is to talk about the little Fulvia. Such a great bat story with it, and I bought those bits of metal. So we'll see how we go. Right now, I've got to dash over to Lamborghini and talk Kuntas to some judges over there. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll go and That's judging of the Kuntas over and done with. That's all three cars judged. Now they have to work out which ones in their class are going to win, etc. I'm now going to have a bit of lunch, meet some friends. And then after lunch, I'm going to give you a tour around the infield and we'll just see some of the other special cars on display here. Right, it's time to do a tour around the field here. We'll probably get interrupted at various points. We're also having trouble with the radio mics here. There seems to be quite a lot of blocks. Uh, blockers here or interference coming from these buildings so if this cuts out every now and then please I apologize now but we've swapped units hopefully it will work I'm going to kick off with this little gaggle here now this is the golden age coupes a gold wing 
I'm not going to talk about the gold wing here because next week I'm on the Mill Amelia in a gold wing. So I'm going to feature one of those there. But something I learned about this, it actually has a sort of tubular chassis, much like the Kuntash. I had no idea. And that's why it has such high seals and how they built this car. This is clothed in this bodywork and underneath is a tubular chassis. Anyway, that's for next week on the Mille Mille. Lovely little Dino down here. This is a 206, so this is the two litre version of the Dino. Beautifully delicate and an outside filler cap on it, which I didn't know on the left hand side. But the car I want to show you here is this one. The Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. And the Stingray, this coupe version, I had a model of this car as a kid and it just struck me, this design, this split rear screen, I think I've always liked the Corvette and the sort of Americana and the design that was coming from America, so different to Europe. What a statement of design this car is. Clap hands, wipers on it. I had no idea until I read this catalogue that there were only 10,594 built. 1963 this dates from. And if I look inside, it's a manual gearbox one as well. Terrific, absolutely terrific. Pop up lights, lovely. Beautiful Aston DB5 Vantage behind Patricia here. What a, what an elegant car. DB5 over DB6 just had something. And I've ignored a 250 short wheelbase over there. How can I do that? But I'm going to take you to the next class. I love this class. This is basically a class of GT cars, 60s and 70s, and a Citroen SM. I don't know if I'm alone here. I've looked at these, I love the elegance, I love this period of Citroen, the madness of Maserati V6 engine 2.7 and the design of this car. And this is a, a manual version, beautiful interior. Why has it only got, I'm looking at mirrors, that has no mirrors. I'm intrigued why it's got those, no wing mirrors, but a little slot there. I'm gonna find out from the owner what that's about, but beautiful color, uh, color combination with the green and the tan interior. There is something hugely appealing with this car. I've looked at them several times, shall I own one? And then I look underneath the bonnet and sort of go off it. But quick, have a look around the inside. Crazy gearbox, five-speed gearbox and these sort of hammock seats. They almost remind me of the Maserati Bora, single spoke wheel, also Citroen and absolutely stunning. Quite intrigued with this one as well. This is the Alpine, this is um, 1600. This one is one of the later ones, I think. Yeah, the 1600S, 1971. What gets me about this, this is a very close match to my little Fulvia, also, 19, well, 1972 and 1600cc. These were rally cars, as in Lancia Fulvia rally cars, but I just think they're so close to the Zagato. Tiny, tiny cars. Uh, too small for me unfortunately i have looked at them but what a lovely aggressive car but and then you move to another french car fascia vega this right hand drive one of two i i learned from the catalog fabulous restoration on it and this is the big engine one i believe six seven six five cc chrysler v8 and a manual gearbox in it glorious interior crazy rack round screen and, and these tail lights and this fin with the indicator at the top of the fin. It looks as though if you come round the back, you look at this car, you'd swear behind it had been lowered or something, or it was one of those crazy cars from America that jumps up on a suspension. No, that is the ride height and the quad pipes coming out the back. Great to see it there. That's the Vega 2. Then we've got two Renault 5 Turbo, Turbo 1 and a Turbo 2. So the Turbo 1, this is the homologation special and this one had the mad interior in it. I don't know how many of these were built. It doesn't say how many were built, but I know they were numbered. Yeah, there's a plaque inside. This is number 815. Perhaps it was a thousand they built for homologation so they go rallying and it did very successfully in rallying. And it was Jean Raganotti who drove this car. We've seen him d display this car at Goodwood doing crazy spins. Mad, mad interior. What dates this car? 1981. Look at the colours of that interior and the mad dash. So this is what the Turbo 1 got. It was even more outlandish than the Turbo 2, which was slightly calmed down from this one. Didn't realise it had TRX tyres on it. So I wonder how tricky the tyres are to get for it. But both seemed 
I, this has got TRX tyres on it as well. The Turbo 2 was a slightly sanitised version of it, but all, almost as mad, really, when you look at those two. What else should we look at? Not a car you see every day. Bentley Continental Sedanka Coupe, and one that I lived with for a week when I was at Evo. It's 1999, got a phone call from Bentley. He said, do you want to try the Bentley Sedanko Coupe? Yeah, Targa Top had these glass panels in here. It's great to see it here. There are very few of these built. It was stupidly expensive. I can't remember, 200 and something thousand as when new. But um, yeah, Evo, we rocked around in this. This was our car. I remember going down to Tesco to get the lunchtime sandwiches in it and that sort of thing. But here on display, unrepeatable sort of car and very memorable week we spent with that car. Corvette behind you, a Jensen FF, this has just come back from rebuild. I love the metallic fleck in this. J Reg, I think that's that would be 1971. It's what we did back then. It was proper metal flake paint, does it say? Yeah, 1971. Jensen FF Mark II. And that giant wing just come back for restaurant and I see an eight track in the dash as well poking out cassette for the eight track in there terrific to see on the field so FF meaning the four-wheel drive version of the event. this wins the best badge of the day for me Monteverdi high speed because of the big engine in it yeah Swiss registered car left-hand drive obviously my little Lancia there is making up the group we swing round I love the early Ferrari 365 2 plus 2, but I wanted to show you this one. Never seen this before, Ferrari Testarossa, left-hand drive, but this one has a Targa roof. Someone has retrofitted a Targa roof in here, so a twin panel roof in it, which I've never seen on one. I've seen that converter one done for the boss of um, Fiat, but never the Targa one, like this one. Never going to feature one of these again. So I, here, 1921, Leicat Halika. Now, if you come around here, this is what aero engines of this period had, 1921. I can never get over all the mechanics on show. There's all the valve gear, all exposed. How does that work? Little springs to bring the valves up, spark plug there, all exposed, because obviously it wants to be in air and cool, but I'm amazed it has no oil feed going to it. Today, that you know, just seems madness to me. What a mad thing to turn up one seat and then yeah, you had to choose your passenger carefully because they had to be a certain size to be able to fit in there. Right, let's go and see what else we can find. Now, separate class down here. This is built to race for the road and it gave us some fantastic cars over the years. Starting off 1973, Porsche 911 2.7 RS. Terrific, still celebrated today. Half a million pound car there. I don't know if there's a lightweight or a touring. It's got no sunroof, it's left hand drive. Iconic colours, obviously, in the white and the red. And then after the 2.7 RS, here, 1988 E30 M3. Absolutely iconic looking car. Looks great in red, grey interior. Has a, I don't, This is extended front splitter on it. Used to get on the Evos. Maybe that was standard on it. I don't know, in 1988. But great looking car. This next one along, the Ford RS500. Still, what a battle this was, 1987. And uh, anyone of my generation remembers seeing these on British touring cars, doing battles, spitting flames out the side. Sorry if you can't hear me, the mic's right beside me. So let's quickly go down this way. Have to show you this, obviously, Lancia Delta Integrale Evo 2, just the same as the one I had, and in yellow. You spot a European Integrale by the same size lights on it. I actually know the owner of this car, uh, and he has enjoyed it. He's commuted into Europe from the UK many times in it. Uh, lovely to see it here. This is the super aggressive boy racer position of the rear spoiler. So there's maximum downforce at the back. You've got those great Recaros in it, Momo wheel. Just great to see it on the showground. They're getting hugely valuable, these. I can't get over how the values have gone up on Integrales over the last five or so years, but rightly so. And I just walked past a Porsche 959. How did I do that? The Comfort model, it's still a wild machine. Four -wheel, they introduced four-wheel drive and twin turbos. I'd love to show you the engine. It's probably not open at back, but the engine, Porsche 911s don't, the engines don't offer much visual enjoyment because they're just a massive sort of air pumps and fan and just don't look great. 
but the 959 is different. It looks way better. They've thought about how it looks when you open the back and always worth having a look at the back of a 959. I digress. Let's go and have a look at the Lamborghinis. Right, 1991 Lamborghini LM002. Yeah, I drove out to uh, Lamborghini and actually did a drive in one of these decades ago, uh, start of Evo. And I went out with Valentino Balboni, who was doing his best to show me that this car could oversteer. It was a wild ride, as you'd imagine, and the poor old camera car trying to keep with this thing just going berserk behind this camera car. What I remember from it was how cramped it was inside. You're sort of, it's a huge car on the outside, and you get inside. Unfortunately, it's got blacked out windows, we can't really see. But you've got quite a small driving area, huge centre console, and then a seat the other side, and then working out how to get it in four wheel drive. We took it onto a, a riverbed and big rocks and things, and it does clamber about very well. There was the one we had, we put Andy Morgan's photographer in the back of here and we almost killed him with the gases that were coming away from the exhaust as we were booting this, basically a, a Kuntash quattro valve engine up the front. Two and a half tons he has to move around, but uh, it gave it some performance, I can promise you that. But uh, great to see, five, six MPG or something you'd get from one of those, but a wonderful thing to see in a display of Lamborghini, a rightful part of Lamborghini history. Well, what do I say here? A really nice looking yellow Espada, Series 2 like mine. I know the owner has also got a Maserati Bora. I've driven of his as well. So great Italian enthusiast of cars. What can you say about the Mural S? I'm lucky enough, please watch that video I did on one as well. A Zero. Now this is, if I go to this Lam Lamborghini Zero S, this is a rare car over here. Apparently there's two over here in right-hand drive. I know the owner of this car has gone right through it. This is just back from a full restoration. Roger Moore had one as well. That's the other right-hand drive car. Very elegant. And this was a Ferruccio Lamborghini car. It's a, um, it's a two plus two, but much smaller, tighter than the Espada, shall we say. And a tweaked engine. I'm not, seeing what, I'm not sure what age this car is. Let's have a quick look at the front. Yeah, 19, 1969 this one dates from. Quite a thing. Pop-up lights, didn't get those on the Espada. So that was a real Ferruccio Lamborghini car. You couldn't quite understand why people wanted to drive around in Muras and Countaches and things. That was more his car. A bit like Enzo Ferrari, who loved the three, well, 250 GTE car and then the 330. He liked the 2 plus 2 cars as a road car. Aventador S. Great. Still looks terrific today can't believe it's about to be replaced but my goodness that that design stood the test of time when you look back at the uh, Mercilago as well it's a great reskin I think of the Diablo brought it bang up to Luke Dunkervelt the designer I want to get one of those in and to do a review of it one of these days oh and there's a there's a Kuntash over there red one might have seen that a few times on the channel already I ought to look at the Diablo SV Love, love that. One, another car I really want to get in the garage. Stripped out. It was almost, they tried to reduce the price of it, so it went to, back to two-wheel drive, um, shorter gearing, so it didn't do 200 miles an hour anymore, but looked fantastic. And I always love the Yota scoops on the top, the roof scoop, air scoops for the engine. That was, that was great to see as well. Right. Now this little gaggle here, this is the bespoke automotive group of cars here on display, and they're basically one-off or two off type cars. And the first one I want to show you is this one. Now, this is 971 Ignore 73 Peugeot 504 Brake Riviera. So this was based on the 504 Coupe. I think it was actually made from the Cabriolet. And Peugeot showed one of these in concept form, or Pininfarina did, but it was never went into construction. Someone a few years ago said, I really fancy that car. Could you make me one? And a company has built this car, they finished it last year, and here it is, the, the one and only Peugeot Brake Riviera, so a, an estate form made out of the convertible. I look inside, it's lovely, the actual boot of it is wood lined, a very elegant car, it's a shame it never went into production, and the very distinctive lights there from the coupe version of this 504 made by Pininfarina. I also quite like the way they've done this little rear roof section that has roof rails but not all the way along the roof. There's some crazy cars here. I saw this buggy come in which I'd never seen. You think it's just your regular beach buggy 
if there is such a thing, but it's not. This has got a Simca engine in the back, four cylinder Simca engine, very distinctive dish wheels, these moon wheels, but wait until you see the seats. <laughs> which seem to be made of old seat belts or something, chrome very minimal of design, really quite, well, quite funky. What year is this one? 1971. Matra Beach Buggy by Batoni. Absolutely love it. French registered. But if you want something with a bit of a roof, well, how about this one? This Mini. 1962 Crayford Mini Risotto Beach Car. And we sort of know Crayford for other conversions. They were very keen at taking roofs off uh, for Cortinas and things, but they obviously started in 1962 with Crayford Mini. Also rather like this Bentley over here. Now this has been redone. This is a bespoke body that you can order today. This is based on a 94 Bentley Continental Arf, the SAF, they've christened it. And this is a coach built car that is being built, recreated today. So you can actually basically buy this new now with these very distinctive rear wings. Just so elegant, fuel fillers on there. Look at that door handle, that's typical Bentley of the period. Very elegant indeed. I hate to ask what the price is, but I imagine it's quite a lot. But come round the back, how about that? You'd notice that if that went past you on the motorway. Very elegant. Also wanted to show you this, just starting it up, which I've never seen before. Apparently this, yeah, 1961 Austin Healy WSM. So this was a coupe body done on a coupe body on a uh, Austin Healy 3000. It, it had a, an interesting history in its life. It came a cropper, they put it at Silverstone, hitting the new pit wall in 1964. That was the standard car, and they basically rebuilt it with this bodywork on it. Um, it was soon competing again, but it was stolen from a London garage, later to be found undamaged in Hull. Sold and used as a rally car, being laid up in the early 70s. And this is the first time it's been seen in public since those days, in the 1970s. Great example of how in the UK we have these incredible people who can make rebody cars and in body over at Austin Healy 3000. Load more cars to see, let's dash up this way. Now, this is an interesting class, this is Evolution of Aero and as you imagine some spectacular rear spoilers on display here. I don't really know where to start with this group. I'll start I suppose here, 1990 Dita Massa Pantera GT5S that borrowed its wing from the Countach. So this is identical wing to the Countach, if you look at it, exactly the same. You can see they're made of foam, they're not metal, they're, 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 they're aluminium over foam inserts and they just sort of bubble. They, they're very, they like corroding the blessed thing, so you keep having to repaint them. But I suppose the most spectacular wing of all has to belong to this. The Plymouth Superbird, 1970. I know if you're going to do a wing, that's how to do it really. Uh, just madness as you can see, but uh, highly distinctive. So it had a droop snoop front as well and a extremely high wing to keep it planted on the racetrack at 200 miles an hour. I didn't know they were 200 mile an hour cars, but I suppose in race form perhaps they were. We all know that the F Ferrari F40 was a 200 mile an hour car, 201 miles an hour to be precise, and still one of the best integrations of a rear wing. It is adjustable, no one ever adjustments, they always keep it like that. Really lovely example. XJR 15 Jaguar, pure race car. I sometimes wonder, I ought to feature one on the channel one of these days. The thing about it is though, when you drive one, they are just pure race car. You can barely get in and out of it. It is very extreme, but on its saving grace is the soundtrack of it with its V12 Jaguar engine. Great to see. Now this is a very rare car, 1991 Supan 962 CP P1, so Group C Endurance Racing. So using, yeah, Porsche 962 as a base. This is a road going Porsche 962, super, super rare. Never thought I'd actually see one for real. And here it is at the display, gurney flap on it. Based on the racing machine that competed at Le Mans in 1990. And here it is as a road car. Looks super tight in there. It does look very good though, this one. And carrying a Porsche badge on its front. Wow. It's a mad thing. And right hand drive. Now, obviously, Bugatti Veyron 
Fair enough. I think this is one of the earlier models. Let's have a quick look at the date of it. Yeah, 2007. So one of the earlier cars. I think they're standing the test of time, these. Still an extraordinary driving experience when you do get behind them. And the great, incredible wing on it that also acts as an engine brake. One thing it does do when you lift the wing up, it does expose the enormous, great exhaust box that normally hides under there, elegantly disappeared under the spoiler. And also the one that I can never get over this, how the engine is fully exposed. There is no engine cover on the Bugatti, not even under glass, all there out in the open. Another car with the most incredible wing, the, this is the McLaren P1. And this is an incredible colour on it. This is a, a purple, but I can just about see the weave on it. It's very bizarre. It's like a lacquer, but paint. And you can see the weave under the paint. Beautifully done. And then obviously bare carbon as well. And with the craziest wing. And this is just such a show because when you deploy the wing into its track mode like this, it also lowers. The ride height alters as well. I'm lucky enough to have ring the, done the Nürburgring ring in this car with Chris Goodwin uh, driving. Most epic lap, it was a six something lap. Uh, I did do a little bit of video and one day I'm determined to put it on Harry's garage. Final car in this little group I'm gonna feature, the Mercer Largo SV. And this one, obviously you can have the rear wing, there was a delete option on that and there was also, you can have little or big SV on the side of it. So 674 SV, the final iteration of this engine, the highest horsepower, the engine that went all the way back in Lamborghini's history, the V12, same as the Countach engine, and it grew to this final evolution of 670 horsepower. Crazy car. Now this is the green group, so this is where the Jaguar XJ Coupe is, and the two cars you see immediately as you come in are these two Rolls Royce from the Peninsula group, the hotel group. If you stay at the Peninsula Hotel, this is what you get picked up in. And they've been a, a huge supporter of Rolls Royce from the beginning. 1935 is the, the early Rolls Royce you see, and they always had them in green. I'm just going to show you this one because I've never seen an Alpha 8C in green. They always seem to be in that very distinctive metallic red colour, but now in green. It's very subtle green as well. And a Zagato bodied Carrera GT. I've seen this on the Mille Miglia as well. Uh, great to see it here. They're quite subtle, all the green cars. They're not loud like that Miura was in the Lamborghini pack. This looks a great car as well. 1972 Alfa Romeo 1300Ti. I don't think this is 1300Ti in it at the moment. It's got the twin plug heads in it. I can see it's got throttle bodies on it. This looks very Alphaholics-like, but it probably isn't Alpha, but someone else is doing it. Warren Heath Engineering have done the engine on this kit. Four door, unsuspecting from the rear. A great fun car to have though. More green over here. Probably the rarest car here in this little group is this Porsche. 991 Speedster and in Brewster green colour. Shame the roof isn't off. I think the roof will be off, but uh, looks very distinct. It even got green leather in this one as well. It's green wheels and green leather. It doesn't sound so good, but if you see the combination actually on the car, it looks fantastic. And this one finally, Aston DBS in green. Apparently, it's the only DBS that was painted in this metallic uh, green colour. Very subtle. Almost looks black, but uh, anyway, there's a quick whiz around some of the exhibits of this event. It's, uh, what's it? it's quarter past four, at half past four, we get to learn who wins the classes of all these cars you've ju I've just taken you around. <laughs> Well, there you go. There's all the prize giving behind it. 
just behind the cameraman. The Porsche 962 was the winner overall, best in show, but the Lord was the garter of Jock the winner of Wild Cars, which was a big surprise and it's a big thanks to all the guys who worked on that city. Adrian and Sam for doing an amazing job on the metal work and for Gordon and Mike doing all the mechanicals, all that work on this car. I'm pretty proud of this one. I think this is probably one of the best full years of Garter 69 there is in existence. So I, if I was judging it, it was one of those. I knew it, was, it had a chance of doing well, but a win at such an event like this, it was a big surprise and I'm hugely grateful to the judges for giving it the best in class win at this event. So I hope you enjoy having a tour around all the cars and the, what goes into doing a concours, the preparation and all that. Now it's a big party as we all celebrate these fantastic cars all around the showground. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.